Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel we'll get a look at the FLSUN V400 Delta 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the FLSUN V400. This is a fast Delta 3D printer with some interesting features. Thanks to FLSUN for sending this to me so I could show it to you. Okay, so let's dive into the specs and talk a little bit about the printer. First off, as you have probably noticed, this is a Delta 3D printer. Delta printers are just tall by design, but woo, is this thing ever tall. With a spool of filament on top, it's almost four feet tall. With the printer on the bench here, I have to reach way up and kind of load the filament by feel. Now, unlike a Cartesian style printer or a Core XY printer, a Delta printer's build envelope isn't a rectangular prism, it's a cylinder. So instead of three dimensions for the print volume, we only have two, diameter and height, and the V400's build volume is a cylinder, 300 millimeters in diameter and 410 millimeters tall. At the bottom of that cylinder is a five millimeter thick aluminum plate that can be heated up to 110 degrees Celsius. It has a magnet on top, which holds on to a big spring steel sheet with a textured PEI print surface. Yes, there's a big flex plate on this printer, so removing prints from it is super easy. The bed is bolted in place and has no adjustments, so the printer includes a bed probe that allows it to get a mesh, it's like a topographical map of the bed, so it knows where the high or low spots are and it can compensate for that. The three arms from the columns all meet at the end effector, and there's a lot going on here. There's a pair of parts cooling fans, there's a volcano style hot end with a bimetallic heat break, and it can raise the nozzle to a 300 degrees Celsius maximum temperature. With that temperature, it's capable of printing PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, polycarbonate, and nylon. Now, I have personally printed PLA, PETG, and TPU with it, and I'll show you some of those prints in a little bit. There's a direct drive extruder here, which I think is kind of uncommon on a Delta. And perhaps most importantly, there are three LED strips to provide lighting, so you can easily see what's happening down at the nozzle without having to break out a little flashlight. Okay, maybe the direct drive extruder is the most important thing happening on the end effector, but I really dig the lighting. Let's see, what else? Oh, speaking of lighting, the FLSUN logo up on the top of the printer lights up, and you can turn that on or off from the tethered 7-inch LCD touchscreen. Now, that screen is actually a tablet-like computer, and it's running Clipper. And Clipper is really the big story on this printer. A 3D printer's firmware has to both plan when and where it's going to be moving the nozzle, and then execute all those move commands at exactly the right moment. Normally, both workloads are handled by the microcontroller on the printer's mainboard, but the Clipper splits that workload. So the part of Clipper running on the tablet is doing the heavy lifting and complex mathematics of planning out all the moves, and it sends the movement commands over to the microcontroller on board the printer to actually carry out those instructions. That means the microcontroller only has to concentrate on controlling the motors and reading the sensors and running the heaters. And that may be how this printer is achieving its 400 millimeter per second print speeds. The touch interface is provided by Clipper Screen, and I find that it's well laid out and easy to use. The tablet is also running Mainsail and Moonraker, which provide a web browser interface for the V400. And that interface is chock full of information and controls. It feels like everything you could ever want to know about or control on the printer is in here somewhere. And that's really appealing to my nerd side. Now, at first glance, I think this could be overwhelming to a person who was just getting started in 3D printing. But it's also very easy to condense the display, hiding controls you don't often need to access, and that can reduce the sense of information overload. The tablet has three USB ports on it. It's connected to the V400 by a power cable and one USB cord. The USB flash drive that comes with the printer occupies a second USB port, and that's used for G-code file storage, among other things, 
And if you want, you can plug a webcam into the third USB port to monitor the printer and make time lapses of prints. Oh, on another note, while the printer does have a filament runout sensor, so it can let you know when you need to run out and get more, it does not have a power loss recovery feature. For me personally, that's not a big deal. I haven't had a huge amount of luck with the power loss recovery feature on other printers, so it's not something I rely on to save the day if power goes out. Putting the printer together isn't difficult, but you do need a lot of room. In fact, the box alone occupied this entire workbench. But really, assembling the printer isn't hard. All the tools you need come with it. And the manual is reasonably clear about the assembly steps. But if you prefer an assembly video, the USB flash drive has a good one that goes through the whole process. And it has a rockin' soundtrack. The flash drive also has videos for leveling the bed, getting your first print, getting the printer connected to your Wi-Fi network, and even connecting a camera. Okay, so I think that covers the specs and the about this printer stuff. Now, I mentioned the printer's 400 millimeter per second print speeds a moment ago, so yes, this printer is fast. And having said that, this seems like the perfect time to talk about the things that I printed. First, I printed the four pre-sliced models that came on the flash drive with the printer. This 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter CHEP cube printed in seven minutes. Seven minutes! And for a seven minute print, it's not bad at all. Congratulations, Chuck Hellebuck. Your calibration cube has hit the big time, and now it's starting to show up as a test print that comes with a new printer. Now about that, though, I think it would have been better if FL Sun had left it named CHEP cube instead of changing the name to XYZ 20 millimeter calibration cube. Actually, what would be really nice would be if printer manufacturers included a text file with attribution for every model they ship on the media with their printers. Okay, what's next? Oh, the knurled nut and bolt, which printed in just under two hours. It came out great, and the threaded parts work perfectly. Next, there's this rabbit thing. It printed in 32 minutes. One thing I noticed is that the surface finish varies from glossy to satin depending on how fast the printer was going on a given layer. The slicer slows the printing speed down to enforce a minimum layer time, and that gives each layer adequate time to cool before the next layer gets printed. But print speed can influence surface finish on some filaments, so that's why that happened. And the fourth and final pre-sliced model on the flash drive is this overhang test. Now this only took 23 minutes to print. I don't see any real problems with this at all, and the overhangs printed well. Oh, all these test models were printed with Jesse PLA from Printed Solid. FL Sun includes configuration files for the V400 that can be installed into Cura 4 or Cura 5, and there's a text file with instructions on where to copy these files. One quick note about this if you're using Cura on a Mac. The instructions reference the share backslash Cura backslash resources folder, and that's specific to the Windows version of Cura. So the fastest and easiest way to get to the right folder on a Mac is, when you're in Cura, pull down the Help menu and select Show Configuration Folder. That'll pop the folder open in the Finder, and you can see the Quality, Definitions, and Extruders folders in there. You might have to make the Meshes folder yourself if it's not already there. So anyway, I copied the files into the right folders and then added the V400 printer in Cura 5. The printer configuration for the V400 only has one profile, normal 0.2 millimeter. It works pretty well, but you may want to click on the custom button to adjust certain settings if you want to print at a different layer height or if you're not getting good results. For instance, the profile has the nozzle temperature locked in at 210 degrees, and the bed is at 60 degrees no matter what material you've told Cura to use. Clicking the little formula icon next to these settings will tell Cura to use the material's temperatures instead of the profile's temperatures. You'll have to set the bed's temperature manually if you want something other than 60 degrees, though. Cura will let you save these changes as a new profile, so you won't have to redo them all the time. Cura has the ability to create thumbnails for your sliced files, and the printer has the ability to display them on the tablet and the web interface when selecting a file to print and while printing. You can create the thumbnails by going to Extensions, Post Processing, Modify G-Code. In there, click the Add a Script button, then click Create Thumbnail. 
Set the width and height both to 300. Then click the Close button. Now any model you slice will include a 300 by 300 pixel thumbnail embedded in the G-code. Okay, so once I had Cura 5 set up for the V400, I wanted to slice and print some files of my own. First, I wanted to see how fast it would print a chip cube that I sliced compared to the one that was included on the flash drive. Well, the one I sliced took 11 minutes instead of 7, but that's still a lot faster than printing with the stock settings on other printers. And it looks a little bit better than the 7 minute edition, I think. Next, I printed a Calicat, and this only took 19 minutes. I'm used to this taking about an hour. Now, I can't find anything to complain about on this print. The Chep Cube and the Calicat were both printed in that black Jesse PLA as well. But I didn't want to print exclusively in that one filament, so I loaded some green Polyterra PLA. Then I printed a 3D Benchy. It finished in 34 minutes, and it looked pretty good, but there's a little loss of detail on the license plate on the back, and the Z seam is pretty visible. Next up is this hex pattern bed scraper. It only took 38 minutes, and I have zero complaints about it. I like this for scraping the priming lines and skirts off the bed without scratching it. Then I sliced and printed this snap closed toolbox, and that took 3 hours 14 minutes to print. This has print in place hinges, and it has a spot for the flush cutters, hex wrenches, and some of the other tools and accessories that come with the printer. The hinges feel a bit tight, but it works fine. The outside looks a little rough in some spots, but overall it's pretty good. My last print with the Polyterra was my desktop trash can, but scaled to 200% size. This model is designed to print in spiral vase mode, but I wanted it to be more than just one wall thick, so I used what I call fake vase mode, slicing it with no top layers, no infill, and I think three walls. It's nice and strong, large enough to use as a regular desk side trash can, and it only took 2 hours and 23 minutes to print. Then I switched over to some PETG in the form of Jesse PETG in the tree green color, and I printed Greengate 3D's bottle opener in 20 minutes. This was sliced with 6 walls and 50% infill for super strength. Unlike a lot of bottle opener prints, this one doesn't require a coin or other bit of metal. It's more than up to the task of removing the lid from a bottle of Coke. This is also the only non-free model in this video, but it's just 99 cents. It's probably one of the best dollars I ever spent on a model. And then I printed this herringbone planetary gear in 45 minutes. This is another model with moving parts that prints in place. It's one I found fascinating to print back when I first started 3D printing, and I thought it was time to print it again. Two of the planetary gears were stuck a little bit to the outer ring, but with a little pressure, they popped loose, and now this thing spins great. This final print is a multi-part model, and I printed the parts in different materials. This is a fun one. It's a squeeze fan, and it works by squeezing this handle to move a set of gears to turn the blades to blow some air. So I printed a body in that green PETG, and most of the gears in a copper silk PLA. Silk PLA is kind of notorious for not having good layer adhesion, so the one gear that connects the rest of the gears to the fan blades, I had to reprint in regular PLA after I broke it. But the other gears don't have that sheer stress of having the fan attached to them, so they work fine. Oh, and the fan blade part? That's printed in TPU. I felt like that would make it safer if someone decided to stick their finger in the blades. Plus, it was a great excuse to print in TPU. Anyway, this little fan actually works. It doesn't move a ton of air, but it moves enough that you can feel it. A little loud, though. Okay, it's time to start wrapping this up. Let me go over some of the things I like and things I don't like about the printer. First, the things I don't like. On the FL Sun Super Racer, there was a tool drawer in the base, and that was super convenient for storing all the tools and accessories that came with the printer. The V400 doesn't have that. Uh, it's tall. I mean, I don't hate it because it's tall. That's just how Delta printers are designed. Complaining that it's tall is like complaining that a unicycle only has one wheel. You kind of know that going into it. Ah, Cura Profiles. It would be great if FL Sun had more than just the one 0.2 millimeter normal profile available for the printer. And it would be great if the profiles used the nozzle and bed temperatures defined in the material profiles instead of being locked at 210 degrees for the nozzle and 60 degrees for the bed. 
Also, even though the nozzle and bed can reach the temperatures needed for printing polycarbonate and nylon, those materials print best in a heated and closed chamber, and this is not that. <laughs> okay, now it's time for the stuff that I do like. This is a big, fast printer, and it can print big things. Also, it can print fast. It's a delta, and those are just fun to watch. I like the lighting on the end effector. I like the user interface on the touchscreen. I like the web interface, and I like that flex plate on the bed because it makes it easy to remove the prints. It's not super loud either. The fans aren't obnoxious, and the motion system is quiet. So that's the FL Sun V400. It's tall, it's fast, and it's done a pretty good job with the things that I've thrown at it. There's not a lot that I dislike about it, and in fact, I'm genuinely impressed with its performance. On FL Sun's site, the V400 is $849 US on pre-order, and to me, that's a good price for the feature set. I'd like to thank FL Sun again for sending this over so I could show it to you. In the description, you'll find links to all the models that I sliced and printed, as well as links to the printer itself if you're interested in it. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.